Sugar Geeks, Liz here. Today I'm going to show you how to make my famous easy buttercream frosting. This buttercream comes together in less than 10 minutes. It only takes five ingredients and it is the most amazing buttercream you've ever tasted. It's coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. Okay, so we are making easy buttercream. Emphasis on easy, super simple. It all starts with pasteurized egg whites. And you might be asking, Liz, why egg whites? What's pasteurized? Where do I get them? <laughs> pasteurized is literally heat treated. So if you think about milk, milk comes out of the cow raw and then they heat treat it and then it's safe to drink. You can do the same thing to eggs. So typically when you make like a meringue based uh, buttercream like Swiss meringue, you have to heat the eggs, pasteurize them with the sugar, whip it into a meringue, let it cool, add the butter, makes delicious buttercream, but is not so easy. So we skip that whole step and we go straight to the pasteurized part. Pasteurized egg whites will say pasteurized on the box, but I guarantee you if they're in a box, they are pasteurized. These come in the egg section, usually on the top shelf. So now all we have to do is literally just mix all these ingredients together. I don't even bring the egg whites to room temperature. They're just straight out of the fridge. So easy. In you go. And then we're gonna add powdered sugar because we're not heating the eggs in the sugar. We have to use powdered. Sometimes people say that they can taste the grittiness of the sugar. I have never experienced that. So I don't know if there's just some other less fine type of powdered sugar out there, or maybe it's just not dissolving all the way. So go ahead and just mix your egg whites and your powdered sugar together for like a minute before you start adding in butter. I'm using my Bosch mixer, which holds quite a bit of frosting, but if you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can totally do the same thing. If you have a hand mixer, you can use it too. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my salt and my vanilla so I don't forget to add it in later. You can switch out vanilla for any other type of extract, strawberry, lemon, almond, whatever you want. So it might look like there's a lot of sugar in this, but there is really not very much sugar in this at all. Like it's not sweet. So you don't really wanna reduce the sugar. You can increase the sugar if you want it to be sweeter, but you can't reduce it. All right, so this is done mixing. Now I'm gonna start adding in my butter um, in small chunks. You can replace this butter with margarine, with vegan butter, with vegetable shortening. I cannot guarantee that the taste will be the same, but you can switch out uh, other types of butter or shortening depending on what your preferences are. So we're gonna whip this on high until it's light and fluffy. And I'm using a Bosch mixer. So this is going to whip up incredibly fast, but if you are using a KitchenAid mixer, it might take a little bit longer to fully get to that whipped up creamy stage. The only way to test to see if this is done is to taste it. If it tastes like butter, keep whipping. <laughs> this right here, you might be tempted to say, oh, this is done. You know, it looks pretty much like buttercream, but I'm gonna taste it. Honestly, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> but it, it does have like a slight tinge of butter flavor, so I'm just gonna keep whipping this. If it starts to look curdled or broken, you can remove one cup of the buttercream, melt it into, in the microwave till it's just melted, like maybe 30 seconds. Whip that in and that little bit of warm butter will make everything come together. Just do not throw it away. Do you know how expensive butter is? <laughs> melt down a little bit, whip it up. Once it tastes like ice cream, it's done. And now our buttercream is buttercream. I am using the whisk attachment to make this light and fluffy, um, but if you wanted to kind of remove these bubbles, you would have to switch to the paddle attachment and then mix it on low for like 10 minutes or so. Um, that doesn't work so great with the Bosch because it is so big and you need your bowl to be slightly full. That's something I usually only do when I'm like making a professional cake and like for a wedding cake and I really care about there being bubbles in the surface, but for just like the beginner, you really don't need to worry about that. Another trick um, for getting your buttercream perfect, because <laughs> we're sugar geeks, right? You can add a very tiny drop of purple food coloring, and I mean tiny. And what that's gonna do is counteract this yellow tinge from the butter. All butter has a little bit of a yellow tinge. And then I'm also gonna add about a tablespoon of white food coloring, and that is gonna make this super white. All right, honestly, that probably was just a tiny bit too much purple. I usually make much more buttercream than this, so I add one drop to probably like a double batch. Super silky, very, very light. Has a very like ice cream kind of flavor. 
So compared to American buttercream, this is not as sweet. It's not gonna crust on you, but it is really great for piping on cupcakes. It's great for putting underneath fondant. I mean, honestly, you can use this buttercream for pretty much anything. As far as how stable it is in the heat, it's not quite as stable as like an Italian buttercream, but it's definitely not as loose as like a cream cheese buttercream. So it really is just kind of like an all around good buttercream to use for general cake decorating or even professional cake decorating. Liz Merrick, how long does this buttercream last? Oh, I'm, th I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so this buttercream is very stable at room temperature. You can leave this really on the countertop for two days if you had to, but uh, I keep it in the refrigerator if I'm not gonna use it, but let's say I was gonna frost my cake tomorrow, just leave this on the countertop. You don't need to refrigerate it or freeze it or do anything crazy like that. The reason is because there's so much butter and sugar in this, it kind of acts as its own preservation and nothing bad can grow in there. It's, it's amazing, I'm telling you, baking is science. Um, if you don't need to use this for like a week, go ahead and just put it in the refrigerator, bring it out when you're ready to use it and re-whip it. Do that trick where you take a cup and melt it and then add it back in and it will bring it back to that original super creamy consistency. If you're not gonna use it for a long time, you can go ahead and freeze it in freezer bags for really forever, but we always say like six months, you know, cause that seems like a good idea. <laughs> so I would say two weeks in the fridge, six months in the freezer, two days room temperature. I get a lot of questions of people asking me how to color this buttercream, if there's any special technique. Honestly, there's not. If you're going to be making super dark colors, then yeah, it's you're gonna, you're gonna have to take a lot of uh, food coloring, you're gonna have to melt it down a little bit and then remix it. If you wanna learn more about that, check out my neon buttercream cake because that kind of goes over that whole process. But if you just want like some pastel colors, all you need is a little bit of gel food coloring. Electric pink, one of my favorite colors, makes a beautiful, nice, soft pink color. Add a little dot, and I want nice, soft pink. Just mix that up with your spatula and that's it. Nothing complicated. So that's it guys. That is how you make my super easy buttercream frosting. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week. Bye.